Well, hello there, everybody. Um, yesterday, I saw a great film, um, one that I really loved, one that I'm still thinking about, uh, and kind of can't wait to see again, uh, just so I can think about it some more. And that's Killer Joe, uh, the new film from William Friedkin. Um, it's super intense. Uh, and I, I just excellent. I think it's uh, one of the better films of the year. Um, it's about a family that defines dysfunctional. Um, they basically want to kill their mother. Uh, okay, you've got a dad, a, a mom, and two kids. Uh, parents are divorced. The father is remarried. The mother. Uh, at least has, you know, some boyfriends. Um, but apparently, even though we never meet the mother, uh, she is apparently, you know, hell incarnate, the worst mother in the world. Uh, so much, in fact, that her ex-husband and her two children want her dead uh, so that they can have her life insurance money. So, in order to kill her, they hire Killer Joe, uh, a detective um, with uh, I don't know what like city they're in but they're in Texas it's set in Texas um, I know that it's like on the outskirts or near a big city but I don't know what big city that is um, but anyway Killer Joe is a big city detective who moonlights as a assassin um, so he works on you know he's a good guy but not really. Uh, so that makes for an interesting aspect to the story. Um, so they hire Killer Joe to kill uh, their mother and well the shit hits the fan uh, pretty much after that. There's a lot of miscommunication, um, lots of disinformation, and uh, lots of death in this film. Um, that's, that's pretty much what it's about. It stars Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey is Killer Joe. Uh, Matthew McConaughey has had a great year. Um, he's had a great run, really. Uh, The Lincoln Lawyer being a great film and a good performance. Magic Mike being an okay film with a great performance for him. And this being a great film with a great performance. So he's really just been batting a thousand. Um, and he's really good here. This is uh, the only other role I can compare this to, for Matthew McConaughey at least, is he was in one of those uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels. I believe it was called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, The Next Generation, maybe New Generation, something like that. Well, he's, you know, it's also with Renel, Renel, Renee Zellweger. Um, well, he's balls out crazy in that film, and he's pretty much balls out crazy here, with a little more restraint. Um, maybe not so much balls out. Uh, he has to hide his balls half the time, uh, while he's the detective. Um, and it's the type of film where he may not be a detective, you know? Maybe in the scenes we see him, you know, it's just, again, that type of film that maybe he's such a great psychopath and uh, tremendous liar that he just has this ability to get in and out of places. I mean, it's, again, it's that type of film. Um, let's see, okay, so Matthew McConaughey, great performance. Uh, let's see, Gina Gershon. Uh, who I haven't seen in a while, still beautiful. Um, she's good here. Uh, she plays the the new stepmom. Uh, then we've got Thomas Hayden Church. She plays the ex-husband. Um, <laughs> uh, great role for him. I mean, really, uh, you can't see anyone else playing it but him. He he nailed the role. It's not really anything that he had to stretch his legs for, but. Uh, I, I thought he was great in the film. Um, Emil Hirsch is pretty much the central character. Um, he's the one that 
instigates the idea. He's the one who's always in trouble. He's the one who needs the money. Um, he's good here. I, I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of Emil Hirsch or really know a lot of his work. I recently saw him in Savages, uh, and I always remember him from uh, Into the Wild. He's good here. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's anything amazing, but he's, he's really good here. He holds his own uh, with probably one of the more demanding roles. Uh, and then the other main character is the daughter. And I, I can't picture her name right now. I can't remember her name. I definitely didn't recognize her. I, I don't know uh, who she was, but she's really good. She had uh, a difficult role. I mean, she had to do... Uh, I mean, really, everyone has a lot of difficulty, a lot of uh, movement to their character, um, a definite arc to every single character, um, and I think they all follow through. I think all the acting is really good, but uh, the director is known for working with actors and really just breaking down a scene. Uh, that director is William Friedkin. Um, William Friedkin was uh, huge... Uh, in the 70s, the early 70s. Um, he did The French Connection, uh, which well, I think 1971. Um, the French Connection, uh, I saw, you know, many times as a kid, but like not really, just because it was my dad's favorite movie. Well, one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, you know, we had a VHS copy and he would watch it occasionally. And, you know, whatever. As a little kid, you want to sit there, you want to see what your dad's watching. But, you know, watching The French Connection at the age of, uh, you know, six, eight, you're not going to last or probably pretty much care for it. So, so I just had the faintest memories of, of The French Connection. But then, um, when I was probably uh, 13 or 14, I, I watched a film that... Uh, well, it, it really fucked me up, and uh, so I, I like to say that it kind of changed my life, and that's The Exorcist. Uh, he did The Exorcist. Uh, I watched The Exorcist alone um, when my parents uh, were, like, out of town. Uh, they were, like, leaving me in the house um, for a weekend. Uh, and whatever, it was at the age where I didn't necessarily, whatever, 14, didn't have to have a babysitter. Um, so left to my own devices uh, in the house for the weekend and <laughs> uh, for some reason on night one of, of my parents being away I watched The Exorcist uh, because at the time this is around the time where I uh, had to watch Alien uh, for the first time where I watched uh, The Shining for the first time I got really into horror uh, around the age of, of 13 to 15 uh, and so this was my first experience watching The Exorcist. Um, if you've never seen The Exorcist, uh, try watching it alone in a dark house at the age of 14. Um, and it will fuck you up uh, quite nicely. Um, I had, you know, trouble sleeping the next uh, couple nights. I, I, after The Exorcist was over, I turned on every single light in the house. Um, every single light. If there was a switch, it was in the on position. Um, I believe I even slept that way that night. The house lit up uh, as a beacon. Um, so, whatever. If you make The Exorcist um, and you fuck my mind up, uh, then, you know, you get a pass. I'm going to have to check out your films. Um, recently, he did... Well, he's been doing a lot of character-driven smaller films... Uh, for some time. He hasn't been like a huge name director. He just has that power. He has that clout uh, from the old school. Um, so he's pretty much just doing whatever he wants, uh, which is making small, character-driven, quiet films. Uh, still highly disturbing, but quiet none the, uh, nonetheless. Um, and I think he's also been focusing a lot on the stage. I think he, he really just wants to do stage work so I think he's been directing a lot of stage plays um, at least a couple of his his uh, last films have come from the stage uh, one uh, and a great film uh, if you haven't seen it uh, Bug um, the last great William Friedkin film I saw was Bug uh, with Michael Shannon and Ashley Judd uh, which was a stage play 
Um, I, you know, again, if you haven't seen it, see it. It's a mind fuck as well. Uh, so here, Killer Joe uh, is another stage play, um, and that is brought to the screen. This time, it's a little uh, different because uh, the man who wrote this, the uh, the play, the playwright, uh, and I want to say it's something Let's L E T T S maybe. Um, don't hold me to that. Anyway, so we have this playwright. Um, the play is has been off Broadway. And now he's getting a chance to adapt uh, the play for the screen, and he does it himself. He's the playwright. He also is uh, he writes the screenplay. Um, so he had, and I also believe that he was a producer on the film. So it's quite interesting that the creator, the writer, um, has this level of control with his with his product, and it's exciting and it's it's good for him. Uh, I think that you know makes it more unique. Uh, and a more focused uh, piece of art. Um, this the, there's a lot to think about here. There's a lot to absorb. It's a very slow moving, methodical film that uh, builds to this uh, incredibly disturbing and intense uh, <laughs> family dinner. Uh, so it uh, it really gets quite shocking and quite disturbing. Uh, this film is, I guess, quite famously rated NC-17. I can't remember the last film that was rated NC-17. Um, I don't get that. Uh, I don't see... I don't really see any difference between this and a R-rated, hard R-rated movie. Um, I mean, I can take a good guess at why it's NC-17, but still it's like... You know, Why? because the NC-17 does limit it so much in terms of audience uh, and exposure. Um, so that's kind of a shame, just because... Well, it, it all comes down to a sexual nature, you know. We, we can be as violent as we want, and if we, and if we get anything sexual in there, then it becomes... I don't know. Uh, we have a problem with that. The American rating system does. And when you combine those two, when you make it... Uh, sexually violent uh, or perhaps violently sexual uh, then perhaps you're just guaranteeing yourself an NC-17 um, but it is you know it does lead up to this moment where you're just kind of in awe you know I just had to peel myself out of my seat um, at the end of this uh, it's an uh, independent film I, if 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 I haven't said it yet, I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine. I, you know, this I'm still thinking about it. It was had some of the performances of the year, so well directed, so well controlled, uh, such a good story that you know, I, I've got to give it a nine. I think I've got to give it a nine. I I want to see it again, just so I can. Again, I think there's a lot going on at different levels. And I want to see it again to absorb more of those things, perhaps uh, see some things that I missed, um, glean some things from the dialogue that I might have missed. Uh, again, there's a lot going on in here, uh, though it may not seem like it. Uh, the direction is really straightforward. You know, there's nothing too flashy, um, but yet it's never, it's never confusing. Um, it's never really boring just because the characters are so odd and you're trying to get into this world um, and it, you're never really bored with it. You're, you, know, you know, again, you're never really bored. Um, but the first, it's probably about an hour and 40 minutes and the first hour is, you know, exposition, dialogue, uh, this building up of, of tension and then you know the last 40 minutes uh, things degrade uh, things degrade uh, but yet you know that's when you know you have all this emotional investment in the characters and then all this stuff starts to happen and so you need that first hour to uh, you know to again become part of their world uh, and their world is, you know, this small town Texas, rural Texas. They really nailed small town life, I think. Um, 
<laughs> though I didn't recognize the particular like devious demonic behavior that's exhibited in this film uh, you know I definitely recognize the characters um, they they really nailed uh, the small town feel uh, the small town dialogue you know there was uh, several instances where I was like they how do they know people talk like that hold on just one second hello hello all right on my way uh, so it's just like they really had an ear um, for that small town life uh, so it just brought me you know into their world much easier and in a way kind of made me feel safe made me feel like I had gone home and then <laughs> it just totally fucked me over uh, just like wow I went home for that uh, how disturbing and again this is a movie about family um, again the climactic scene literally is a family dinner um, it's just uh, like a family dinner from hell uh, I, the, the directing straightforward um, lots of close-ups um, you know just going back and forth just seeing actors act basically uh, which is what you know William Freakin does um, so I think it's another great film from him um, I think it's one of the better films of the year uh, very you know controversial you're not probably gonna have a great time watching this um, because you know a lot of stuff happens that you would never want to see happen to you or to anyone you love um, but maybe there's not a love going on in this movie uh, you know these these people have a warped concept of love and, and family um, I don't really know what else to, to, to say I thought it was very powerful uh, excellent all of the acting is tremendous um, I think it's a kind of a an excellent what do, you, what do you what's the word not groundbreaking but just a, not capstone but a milestone it's like a milestone performance for for Matthew McConaughey this definitely goes right up with with his best um, so I think that's all I've got to say about that I've got to run uh, so that was Killer Joe uh, it was great I'm giving it a solid nine uh, thanks for watching